when an acid reacts, it donates a proton. We've been over that a few times. So if we're going to react nitrous acid, HNO2, we'll react with water in this case. So HNO2, the nitrous acid, loses a proton. That proton gets attached to water to turn it into H3O plus hydronium. And we end up with the nitrite ion. Now, that nitrite ion that's produced is actually a base. In, depending on the chemical circumstances, it can react with an acid, with a H3O plus, to turn back into nitrous acid. So if there's enough H3O plus around, it's going to be forced to turn back into nitrous acid. If there's not much H3O plus around, it'll, the nitrous acid will turn into nitrite. So we've basically got a reaction that can go one way or it can go the other way. These are the exact same reactions back to front. So because it's a reaction that can go both ways, we say it is a reversible reaction. And instead of writing out the reaction twice, we use the reversible arrow. So that equation is written that way to indicate the reaction can go forward or the reaction can go backwards, depending on the circumstance. Conjugate acid-base pairs. So if we know that an acid can turn into a base and vice versa, then a conjugate acid-base pair are those two chemicals which are different by one proton. So in this case, We've got nitric acid losing its protons, reacting with water, so nitric acid's acting as an acid, donating a proton. Water is acting as a base, it's accepting a proton. So nitric acid turns into the nitrate ion, and the nitrate ion is said to be its conjugate base. It's what nitric acid turns into when it loses its proton. So the acid turns into its conjugate base. Water is the base, it accepts a proton and turns into hydronium ion, so water is the base, therefore the hydronium ion is its conjugate acid. So effectively, there are two substances in any of these acid -base, simple acid-base reactions, there are, two, there are two substances that differ by a single proton. The reactant with the extra proton is the acid. The reactant with one less proton is the base, turning into the conjugate base, conjugate acid. Okay, so how do we need to use this in problems? Well, <coughs> are these acid-base reactions? If they are, we're gonna have conjugate acid-base pairs, two substances which differ by a proton. So what have we got? We've got HCl turns into Cl minus. What do they differ by? A single H plus. H2O turns into H3O plus. What do they differ by? Again, a single H plus. So HCl loses the proton, so the acid turns into its conjugate base. The H2O accepts the proton and turns into H3O plus, so the base turns into its conjugate acid. So we've got the two conjugate acid-base pairs. Most definitely is an acid-base reaction. Now what's happening here? Sulfuric acid reacting with zinc metal to produce zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. Do we have a substance losing a single proton, a substance gaining a single proton? No. What does the zinc do? Does the zinc gain a proton? Does the zinc lose a proton? No, neither of those. It turns into an ion. Sulfuric acid sort of kind of loses two protons to turn into the sulfate ion, but this is not. We don't have two substances differing by a proton, another two substances differing by a proton. It is not a conjugate acid base pair. therefore not an acid-base reaction. Nitric acid reacts with sulphate 
to produce nitrate and hydrogen sulfate. Okay, we have a look at the pairs of related compounds. So nitric acid's a related compound is going to be the nitrate ion. What do they differ by? A single H plus. Take away a H plus from this and what are we left with? We're left with that. So acid, conjugate base. Sulfate turns into hydrogen sulfate. What's the difference there? We add a H plus to this, we end up with a H, add a plus and the two minus goes down to one minus. Most definitely is acid base and they are our conjugate acid base pairs. Okay, do the same for these equations. Identify them as acid base or not, and if they are acid base, identify the conjugate pairs. Submit your answers on Google Classroom. And for that question as well. Now the important thing in this question is, Look at the pairs of substances. Is there a single H plus difference between the two chemicals? Sure, is there a one H plus difference between those two? Is there one H plus between those two? Is there one H plus between these two? And so on right the way down. Is there only one H plus difference between the chemical on the left and chemical on the right? If so, they are a conjugate acid base pair. If not, how could you write a conjugate partner for each of them. Now, what's one little thing? Um, just note that the really strong acids, HCl, H2SFL, hydrochloric, sulfuric, have got really weak conjugate bases. The really strong bases have got really weak conjugate acids. And as the strength of the acid decreases, the strength of the base increases. Okay, a bit more definitional stuff. Polyprotic acids, substances which are able to donate more than one proton. So sulfuric acid can, has got two H's there which it can donate. It is said to be diprotic acid. So each of the two H's there can be lost. So we can react sulfuric acid with two base molecules. Each of the water molecule accepts the proton to turn into H3O+. So to accept both the protons, we need two waters. That way the sulfuric acid ends up as sulfate and we end up with two H3O pluses. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4, is triprotic acid therefore can lose three protons. So we can react it with three molecules of a base. What base are we going to choose? Well, let's choose sodium hydroxide. So three H pluses there. We need three OH minuses here, so that means three sodium hydroxides. We end up with the phosphate ion with those three ionic reaction being ba balanced here, <coughs> double replacement reaction, and HOH reacts with a H plus to produce a water, so three waters are produced. So two H pluses, <coughs> excuse me, diprotic, three H pluses, triprotic, together are called polyprotic, many protons. HCl, for HCl is only monoprotic, it's only got one proton to donate. And demonstrate, write a reaction to show it's a monoprotic acid, well you just have it react with one molecule of a base.
More definitional stuff, amphiprotic substances can act as both acids and bases. So, many of the type, uh, ions like these can be amphiprotic. So, hydrogen carbonate ion can gain a proton or it can lose a proton. You can write an equation to show both. So first of all, you want to show it acting as an acid. What do we react acids with? Well, if you want to show it reacting as an acid, you would react it with a base. So HC 304 minus plus hydroxide gives fused carbonate plus water. So if you want to show it acting as an acid, just pick a strong base to react it with. If you want to show it acting as a base, pick an acid to react it with. I've picked ammonium this time. So hydrogen carbonate acting as a base, it's got to accept a proton, so it's going to pull one of the H pluses off ammonia, turn into H2CO3, it's going to accept a proton, the ammonium is going to lose a proton to turn into ammonia. Okay, just another little bit of terminology to be familiar with, strong acids, weak acids. Strong acids are acids which readily donate protons. So if you've got one mole, hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid is a strong, pro, a strong acid. You dissolve it in water, it's gonna readily donate protons. All of those HCl molecules are going to lose protons. So one mole of hydrogen chloride dissolved in water means you're going to end up with one mole of hydronium ions plus one mole of chloride ions. So heaps and heaps of H3O plus is produced per amount of HCl reacts. That's what makes it a strong acid. Weak acids are acids which most of the molecules don't actually donate protons. So you get ethanoic acid, one mole of ethanoic acid reacts. Hardly any of the ethanoic acid molecules in that one mole actually lose their protons. In fact, basically one in 100 ethanoic acid molecules actually react. So that's what defines a weak acid. Don't readily donate protons. Not many of the molecules ionise. Now, so weak and strong is completely different to concentrated and dilute. Concentrated and dilute is a measure of the concentration. Concentrated acids have a high concentration. Lots and lots of moles have been dissolved in a given volume of water. So 10 moles HCl, that's a concentrated solution because there are 10 moles in one litre. That's a lot of HCl. as opposed to a dilute solution where you've only got a very small amount dissolved in a given volume of water. So if it's 0 0.01 mole per litre HCl, then you've got hardly any HCl having been dissolved. It is a low concentration. It is a dilute acid. Okay, time to do these questions. Submit the answers in the usual way. And answer the first set of chapter 15 questions as per the task set online.